Hi guys, this is Kearns and this is for lesson 6, market terminology. Basically in this lesson we're gonna start by lay down some very usual terms on the trading world just to make sure that we understand each other specifically when we're gonna go enter in further more a uh, bigger subjects it's just in a sense we're gonna um kind of explain some some basic stuff if you have never been exposed to them it's a good opportunity to get some review okay now as i like to start my some of my lesson with a quote this one is at some point in your life you will have to believe in something i'm gonna let you find the interpretation for that and now we're gonna start right away now what is the market terminology the market terminology is a set of words, idioms, and concepts that all traders must be familiar with in order to share their ideas, information, analysis, and more. In other words, it's a set of, it's like a code that we, we kind of talk trading, if you can say it like that. When someone say, for an example, I am going to buy on retracement. If you are not familiar with those terms, they might be a little bit difficult for you to understand because that same that single phrase just reveal even the trend that we are dealing with. Now, I'm going to present you a very simple interface which is the Coinbase pool interface. Now, um, this is probably one of the simple ones that we're going to use, and that's the main trading platform we're going to use in this class. So, here, these are the pair, or people call them instrument. You can choose which pair you want to trade. They call that a pair. And over there, there is your balance. You can't see how much money you have here. More the more angel the better it is for you and then these are the order form now basically this is where you're gonna place your orders now when it comes to swing trading the order book it's so it's not um you're not gonna really use it i'm gonna say like that uh you're gonna you're not gonna use the other bot so often the reason is as a swing trader Remember that your position generally tend to stay open from well overnight and we can for for an example sometimes I'll let some position open for like two three weeks. So the study of order books is technically Ill irrelevant if you're not scalping or if you're not day trading. Okay, when we're gonna talk about time frames we're gonna uh, insist and we're gonna give more detail about the differences between those type of trading now the shorts in Coinbase Pro is obsolete you won't be able to do any kind of deep technical analysis because we gonna essentially use technical analysis to take decision in our trades so when it comes to the short it's useless okay same thing for the other book the trade history is not really useful in the context of swing trading and this is on also now technically we're just gonna use over here all right now this is the first time i am exposing you to kind of trading platform the one that we're gonna use for the class but we're gonna spend more time studying shorts and we're gonna spend more time on trading view now 
let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the differences between two well-known type of analysis in the market now what is the fundamental analysis and then technical analysis what are difference their difference now I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail but what I want to say is the fundamental analysis is essentially the type of analysis that investors like they for an example before investing on a uh, on a business or buying a stock they need to go into the part the, the company that they want to invest in they are the they care about who's in control who's leading what is the background of that person uh, they care about a lot of things that is very internal to that particular business they have their way of doing it i am not a fundamentalist I got friends they are fundamentalists you know we share informations but i am not particular fan of this type of analysis but there is no such a thing or which one is the best than the other because based on my um based on my experiences both of them can perfectly make a good living being per um decently profitable in the market now technical analysis is is a form of analysis uh, it's one of the modern form of analysis i can say we use a lot of computerized data and we use a lot of recent technology and it's a total different word and it's like a total different language if i can say it like that i start by some basic um basic tools like lines and in different kind of drawing on and can go up to some very difficult concept like heliot waves and we're gonna have to go over all of them some of them i'm gonna go a little bit more detailed but um for the purpose of this to stay in this class curriculum i am gonna go over some very specific of them and maybe after that i'll give some additional videos as bonus we never know so the second terminology we're gonna talk is exchange trade now essentially this means that you trade with your own form now if you have never been exposed to war now, the great majority of the trading platform they offer this type of trade for an example coinbase coinbase pool in is is a trading platform in which you can only exchange trade but in contrast to exchange exchange trade i'm sorry <laughs> um there is the margin trade which essentially means that you can use or you can borrow money from your broker book, or people that are ready to found your trade so technically you are capable of using um another person found in order to trade for an example if you were let me try to explain that real quick but this is not something that we're gonna stay for now we're not gonna go a little bit we're not gonna do it in, into too much detail but technically this mean in an exchange trade exchange one if you have one thousand dollar for an example and then the particular coin or the stock is ten dollar so it's ten dollar you know so you can only go ahead and buy 100 coin or stock if you are trading stock market but when you are using the margin the margin type the margin is different i'm gonna use green margin trade you can on the platform that you are using for trading you can use their founding system they have some kind of different type of funding and that same thousand of dollar you have 
you can use it and trade up to whatever they allows you to trade for an example if it's if it's if they offer you for an example if they offer you 2x on example 3x they call that leverage let's say 5 and then this essentially means that you can use two times leverage and trade up to two thousand dollar what you can so you can technically use another thousand dollar and using their policy or their terms they will, they'll show you they'll give you their requirement for security for that particular loan if you want to use their three times leverage so you can trade up to three thousand dollar okay you can trade up to if you are using the five leverage if that trading platform offers five you can trade up to five thousand dollar if it's offered ten then you can use ten times leverage and trade up to 10k now this is a very risky and you better stay away from this type of trading for at least one year okay you won't have to wait two years to start margin trade but you need to um you need to at least understand a huge amount of simple context using exchange trade in which you're not gonna blow up your account before starting doing margin trade. so this is a subject that we'll probably have to go back and then um over um maybe down uh, part two or part three of this class i guess that was it. okay so the next thing is orders now technically in the in the trading world we essentially do only two things we only we buy or we sell okay but so often a trader would use the term buying or selling now we use it they use it a lot but additionally they use the term long and short now i'm gonna go back and try to do some small explanation you will you will hear that so often that someone say i am going long on that particular coin or on that particular stock whatever instrument they are trading they are going long so technically they are buying okay there is um there is a video upcoming about the psychology behind this so we're not gonna go into detail but this essentially means that they're buying going long or long mean buying selling in short they kind of look alike with a little bit of uh, it's a little bit more different in short and shorting is essentially available on margin trade so this one is essentially for margin trade but the the effect in the market is similar to selling it's just different different type of condition i can say so um and once again there is a very detailed information that i'm gonna give about that so technically when you are trading you're gonna have to use orders there is different type of orders and whatever the type of orders you are using essentially the order can only be a buy order and it can only be a a sell order so you are essentially buying it's just two action it's just two action that you're gonna have to manage on, during your entire trading journey you won't have to do anything else it's just buying or you're gonna sell now using your analysis there is different way to enter into a position when we say enter into position technically it means that you're gonna open a trade so we're gonna make an investment or we're gonna sell something that we did invest in now this is the first is order form in which we're gonna talk about the limit order 
now because there are different type of orders in the market the limit order differ from other type of orders because you can set up your price technically you're gonna have to use um, limit orders now the limit order give you the opportunity to select your price this is what differ limit order from market order a limit order you have the possibility of choosing which price and i say that you're gonna and you're gonna enter a buy you're gonna enter a long position so we're gonna buy using a limit order you select sorry oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so in a limit order, well, well, in the limit order, you you select your price, and then you select your price here. I need a different color. Okay, so you select your price over here, and they'll charge you a fee, and they'll tell you. How much you can get if for example you choose to buy the max your account can buy they tell you how much you can have to you're gonna have to buy for here and it is it's the exact same thing for selling using a limit order you select your price and you select the amount you want if you want max they will tell you and then automatically you're gonna have a fee and the total you're gonna have to pay as soon as you click one of these button then your order is being posted okay now your order once your order is being posted depend of what kind of order you're using if the price reach the one that you want if you're selling you are if you are selling and i'm gonna start by giving you the concept of ask and bid technically when you buy when you are buying when you are buying when you are buying you give you present you in you present yourself in the market with a bid and when you're selling you present in the market with an ask okay so you have you this you you define your order you define your price and the amount you want to buy now the different type of order is the market order generally this order you do not have to select any kind of price this essentially means that whatever the price is if for an example you choose if for an example okay if for an example you choose um let's say that you did bought a certain amount of coin in this case ethereum you did bought a certain amount of of them and then you are ready to sell if you don't want to for an example execute your order as fast as possible you just select how much you want to sell and you can realize that there is no price that you have to uh, define that's the reason why I use the market as the second one to explain now what happened is the market if you are selling the market gonna um, the platform I mean oh sorry um, let's say this if you are buying if you are buying using using a market order the platform is designed to find you the best price for a buyer which generally is the lowest price now because this is this happen automatically they generally charge a higher fee for this type of order generally and it's the same thing for buying using um, market order generally what happened is if i am if i am let's say that if i am out and i'm not in front of my computer and i am 
and I didn't set a target for an example for for a particular position uh, I might open my my phone and then close an order without uh, and pay f a bigger fee pay a bigger fee just using a market order sell selling okay so if I am gonna close using a market order the market gonna try to find me the highest price the highest price for my ask okay the market gonna find me the a, a good position and because of that they're gonna generally charge me a higher fee for that particular automated trade in a sense now in Coinbase I think that uh, back in I don't know but it used to be free limit limit orders used to be free but now I realize that they charge I don't have how much it is but it's always recommend to go ahead and read the description about your trading platform the one that you're using they'll give you more information about their fees if there is a way to get a discount for an example I know that people that are using Binance they get a discount if they hold BNB so you can go ahead and use this kind of things to lower to get a lower fee you know it is uh, it's um, a good opportunity because I think that I told you that when using big other big trading platforms generally they charge you bigger fees and from the purposes of learning if you are at a very early age of your trading journey it's you're not gonna enjoy the the experience so I strongly recommend that you start with something that can be cheap but you can learn at, um, on an, and have a decent ex experience and then the next thing is what the call a stop limit order now there's different type of stop holders I'm not gonna go into detail of them but I'm just gonna talk about the stop limit order now technically uh, in order to explain that I'm gonna try to find an, an illustration I'm gonna try to give you an illustration let's say that you did buy so you have because I want you to start by being um, get used to the language let's say that you are long on ethereum so that's the common jargon I think if you can say the common language let's say that you are long on ethereum since it was um, well let's say $50 that's the price that you buy it and then you have 10 ethereum you've been holding it for like uh, three months okay and then after three months the price is around two hundred dollar then you just want to let it go up because the price is now two hundred dollar you don't want to close at two hundred dollar you just want to make sure that whatever happened in the market you don't lose your money you might use a stop limit order because you have a, a long position which means you did you did bought at 50 and now we are 200 we can use um we can use a stop limit order to secure the gains i'll give you an example now i am gonna create a stop order in which i am gonna tell the trading platform if ever let's say that we are at $200 right if the market if the price drop $100 I wanna close the position so I wanna sell which mean I am gonna put my stop order uh, stop price at $100 so I'm gonna tell them $100 and I am gonna sell everything for an example sometimes you can use that to reduce position but I'm gonna tell them $100 and if ever the price reach $100 I want to sell all my ethereum the 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 entire 10 I don't want you to get yeah wait 
Okay, so I want all my Ethereum to be sold. The 10 one to be sold. And then the price that I'm asking is, for an example, uh, $105. So technically, this order gives you the opportunity to create conditions. For an example, if the market starts dropping and then you're not in front of your computer or you're not watching the chart because one of the most interesting thing about swing trading is the fact that you don't have to be slave of the screen like day traders and scalpers are so often so if it drops $100 the trading platform will hope in a position in which it's gonna create an ask so it is it's gonna ask it's gonna ask um one hundred and five dollar as a price to sell ten ethereum all right so this is gonna be as soon as the price dropped to one hundred dollar this order is gonna be posted because this is the stop limit now there is different type of stop this is a trading trailing stop in which uh, this modify the stop price and the limit price modify based on the direction of the trend and stuff so this these are very um a little bit more complicated but we are gonna have to talk it i want to keep it a little bit sim simple as of now so technically this is a this is a harder design to help help you doing what they call um so often you 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 hear that from traders and say okay i'm gonna look my gain so whatever happened in the market I'm just gonna let the trade give going up but whatever happened I cannot lose any money anymore because I, I got a good one now stops are also good to limit your losses they're also good to limit your losses in a sense um, for an example if you enter a trade and then you are because generally what you're gonna do as a day trader is I'm, I'm sorry as a swing trader is as soon as you enter a trade you define what they call or what they call a risk versus reward this is called a risk reward ratio generally you will you will heard traders talk about RR ratio Generally, what does that mean is, what is for that particular trade, so for that particular trade, let's say trade A, trade A, um, let, let's go to the whiteboard instead of using this. We're going to talk about this and just to show you the point about, just to show you the point about using a stop loss, a stop limit order in this case they call it a stop loss okay in this case they call it a stop loss you will you can hear that so often they say okay i'm gonna put a stop loss sorry my wiring is terrible i'm gonna use a stop loss technically this means that i'm gonna use a stop order I start limit harder just to make sure that I do not lose more money that I was um, that I can support or I'm not gonna lose more money that I was pretty fine myself to 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 lose let's say that we have a trade we're gonna call it trade a trade a and then generally as a swing trader before you enter a position you're gonna do what they call a risk versus reward ratio this stand for ratio so often call RR ratio this mean for that particular event remember we're gonna trade based on sets so this might be a sets of 20 trade you know from 8.1 for example to 8.20 so that's a set of 20 trades but for every single trade we're gonna accept what they call a, a, a ratio of or ratio of one two three 
so we're gonna risk we're gonna risk one dollar in order to make three dollar technically does that mean if we enter a position um it was yeah it was um here in the middle like one hundred dollar if we enter a long position so the this trade right there is a long I hope you get it because I told you what, what was along. So a good RR ratio, a good RR ratio means that I'm ready to lose 1% in order to gain 3%. So this means that over there if ever the market drop like one percent of 100 dollars is 99 so if it's 99 dollar i am taking the loss because i am ready to accept three percent gain so one or one or three dollar so if you do that this is called a rr ratio because we are talking about um, terminology these kind of things when they talk about them and then you're not familiar to them they are very difficult to understand so when you get that this is specifically for one trade and that is trade a so once you enter the position right there you're gonna you're gonna enter your long here so this might be a buy a buy limit order for an example and then in order to secure that you don't lose more than one percent you're gonna lose your stop limit order at that level here we're gonna use a stop limit order that's what they call placing a stop loss in which we're gonna tell the market if ever we drop one percent i wanna close I'll take that sh that one so and then maybe you are looking for to get um, 103 which is 3% this is um, considered as your target now in the swing trading world these numbers are way higher than that for an example this can easily be um, 30% and this around two three percent and like even four percent because swing trading remember we are using big time frames and when we're gonna talk about time frame studies i'm gonna tell you what to expect when it comes to the volatility when it comes to the moves and the difference between uh, trading in big time frames and the difference in uh, difference between using big time frame and small time frames Okay, I think that's it for stop losses. So this is the same thing if you did enter a short position. I'll see if I can. And let's try that again. Let's try that again. Okay. Now, if it was the the the, the other direction, if for an example, I am gonna talk about another one. Let's make another one just to make it more understandable if i can say um okay just let's just use another one so we're gonna use um we're gonna we're gonna talk we're gonna use uh, another trade we're gonna call it trade b sorry trade b trade b is a sell now if you are trading um on a margin um, on a margin platform if you have access to this this might be a short a short so I'm gonna explain you the psychology behind that you in one of the class it's a class that I, I think that I already record and stuff so let's say that you think that it's gonna go down and then same trade same trade ethereum for an example $100 this is where you enter your position okay and then 
we were there sorry and then you tell the market that well I think that the price is gonna go down I am looking for uh, I'm looking for a 3% gain okay I'm looking for to um, I don't wanna I don't wanna get you confused using different kind of color so if the price go down um, this is a this is a bell movement I'm supposed to put this on using a, a red color so what I am gonna do is uh, okay so I am gonna look for 3% gain versus 1% loss okay now where is the move so your stop loss will be a stop buy order so you're gonna put a stop buy order here here your short position gonna be here sorry your short position will be here and you're gonna close here so this is gonna be your target that's an example and this because you think that the market gonna go down you think the market gonna go in that direction this is called a short position and this is called this is technically when you are selling you are betting against the price now the reason why um, this is green even though the price is going now is because that percentage represent the the gain when it comes to that particular trade so it's three percent green because it's three percent gain this represents the losses that you are ready to accept and once again in the swing trading three percent is i mean i'm i barely look for three percent only because we look for big swings and then we can go very high like way higher than that generally double digits anything from 10 to 100 percent if i can say that okay so technically this is what they call a stop limit order now a stop order remember there's different type of stop orders the limit one is probably the one that you want to be more familiar with and i think that i give some explanation about that so let's talk about positions now you heard me use the word positions and position size now the reason why I'm gonna introduce these two terms right now is because so often you're gonna you're gonna hear that from another trader or other traders they say that I'm gonna open a position technically opening a position mean taking a trade so if the person said if you heard someone said I have a position I am opening a position I open the position have open position this technically mean trade it just mean trade okay it's a trade a position is technically a trade now when it comes to um, when it comes to technical analysis some other traders use the word positions to to say their to express their sentiment toward what kind of trend for an example someone might say my position is a bullish position now this this is a little bit different because um this trader is talking about the trend not a uh, an actual trade okay now the position size is the amount of money that you are ready to risk the position size is technically means um risk on your account So I'm gonna explain I'm gonna give you an example if your account is a 10k account once again the general the most accepted risk is 2% generally they say you should not go over 2% well 
really depends i strongly recommend that you respect that but i'm not gonna tell you that i always respect it actually i barely respected that but from the purposes of learning you should stay stick around the two percent just to make sure that you don't blow up your account now opposition size is the for an example if um if i if i did enter a loan i'm not gonna use the word buy again because i want you to get used to the term if i did enter a loan uh on ethereum at 100 dollar my position size might be different than yours even though we have the same entry price so the entry price is the price that we open the position the long position okay so my position size might be 100 ethereum and yours is 10 ethereum that this number stands for the size of the positions they are different size this is a bigger size than this one right there okay now the amount of risk you take on your account really depends let's say that you take um, a 10 ethereum position size but that's the max you can take so technically you risk uh 100 percent of your account which is totally not recommended you should never do that or for an example if i enter a 100 ethereum position size and then my account is big enough to buy 1000 okay this means that i put 10 percent of my account at risk you know even though this position size is bigger than this one right there it really depends on how, how much money you have remember um if you are trading using margin this is different um the positions the the risk you take does not include your trading balance the trading balance is different your tradable balance i'm sorry because the trading balance i'm gonna let me let me go ahead and give you an explanation because this is where we lay down the terms and just to make you understand if you are margin trade i said that i'm gonna stay away from it for now but this is pretty simple like i told you if you have one thousand dollar let's say that you are trading using um 5x which is five times the money you have so you can trade up to five thousand dollar okay now this is your balance these are terms that you need to be very familiar with this is your balance this is your leverage this is called leverage so we're gonna talk about you you heard people say 5x 10x 5 5x 10x you know i think that some training platform offer up to 100x which is crazy and this is your tradable tradable balance okay now if you take a 100 um a 100 dollar position position size you risk 10 percent of your balance so this doesn't consider that you should not consider that very important that's that's exactly what i mean now that is if you are trading using margin okay and after that we have um the concept of bid and ask now i just wanted to go over this real quick because um these are definitions that i find on investopedia i think so i'm just gonna read that difference between bid and ask generally bid is the the main action through which buyers or the bulls we're gonna stop using the word buyers we're gonna use the word bulls they take their action so a bid price is the highest price that a buyer or bulls or bidder they are willing to pay for goods 
it is usually referred to simply as the bid. So it can be a stock or coin, whatever it is you are bidding. The ask in the concept of trading on exchange, the ask price is the lowest price a seller is willing to accept. The difference between the two bid and ask is called the spread. Keep those words in mind because you're gonna hear them. Many people are gonna many other traders keep using them. Remember, just remember that. And after that, there is a concept of retracement. Retracement is a temporary reversal in the movement of a price, those periods during which the price decreases despite the overall upward trend for the day are known as retracement. Why it matters? Because you know when it comes to swing trading, it's very important to make the difference between a reversal and a retracement. Now, the reason why I came with this slide is because I wanted you to pay attention to the word temporary. So, when using technical analysis, we're going to use specific um, trick and tips in which we're going to have to make sure that we do not confound, we, we do not mistake retracement and reversal. You have um, an option talking retracement. The price doesn't go up straight right away. The price, generally the market keep a wave, take a little bit of breathing, go again, a little bit of breathing, go again. That's generally, generally that's the way the market moves. Now this movement right there, in the particular option, this movement are called retracement. Now there is way to make the difference between a re retracement and a reversal because when it's reverse, when the market reverse, which means the market start going down or the market enter a bear trend. Now, in order to make the difference, we're going to use some very specific technical analysis tool to just to, to help you make the difference between the two of this. And after that, I am. We're going to talk about what is a rally a lot of people talk about rallies um the definition is it's a period of sustained increase in the price the type of price movement can happen during either a bull or bear market when it's known either as a bull market rally or a bear market rally now what is generally mistake that beginners make is because they think that a rally because it's so often a rally is because a rally is a movement is a is a movement in which price are going up so often they are mistaken and they think that well there is a rally we're gonna buy a lot of um, people are making that mistake well your action in the market, let me get the, take the right board. Your action in, sorry, your action in the market. Now, anytime you have a rally, anytime you have a rally, we're talking about rally or rallies, I can say. Anytime you have a rally, your action really depends on do we have a bull market or do we have a bear market it's not enough to just say there is a rally in the price because there's two types of rallies there is a bull rallies and there is the bear rallies and from the context of trading in a bull rally, technically, you, for example, one of the one of the trading strategy that I use in bull rallies is that as soon as I use I have bull rally, I set up my trades in order to buy.
by on retracements or I might use Fibonacci we're gonna talk about Fibonacci or um, there's many way to abort this we're gonna talk about this on detail this is more trading strategy now in a bear market even though all wireless are movement to the I even even though all wireless are movement to the top or we even though they are movement in which price are going a little bit higher and higher and higher in a bear market you don't buy on retracement technically we're gonna use different strategies in which for an example we're gonna look for an example the um, we're gonna start to sell we're gonna sell or if you can margin trade you're gonna short on very specific moment they might be oversold overbought situation I'm not gonna define them here I just want you to start by listening listen those terms stop questioning those terms so we might use some indicators we might use um, moment in the market they call diversion for an example we might use diversions diversions we might look for diversions we might look for um situation of oversold overbought or we might look for an indication to short but the thing is because rallies are movement in which the price is going up the behavior really depends in what kind of main trend are we dealing with all while all rallies are not uh, a pass to stop buying like crazy it really depends when you you you, you are done with your trend study and your trend study will tell you which side are we and then your action gonna, you're gonna take action based on what kind of main trend are we dealing with okay then after that this is something that you you probably heard so often and particularly in the cryptocurrency well if you haven't heard the, the term buying the dip and then you're probably totally new to that now if you heard that well once again that's probably one of the most deadliest way to abort the market because you don't buy the dip in any given trend i'll give you an example this is my personal opinion this buying the dip refer to the purchase of an asset after it has decreased in price buying the dip has different contexts and different odds are working out depending on the situation in which it is utilized some traders may say they are buying the dip if an asset that's the most important part of it if the asset is in a long term oh my god that's what i'm doing uh, which has some kind of way to do that straight asset is in long term strong uptrend here is your word you don't buy the dip in the bear market unless you are suicidal okay so i want you to start by get used to the fact that you should never you should never take action in the market before doing your trend sturdy the reason is simple swing traders we don't play with this word the reason is so often we let our position open overnight we don't want to be wrong about that because we know that a trend can quickly escalate to a total disaster so we don't want to be wrong about this particular word right there so when it comes to swing trading everything start with trend sturdy and there's many ways to do it i'll teach you some very useful way to do them never be wrong about the trend 
so that you won't be so that you won't trade against the trend okay so lots of those definition been using by i use investopedia i think that i use some from wikipedia too if ever i have it i'll probably hide it and that's it for lesson six okay this is the beginning of we're gonna start getting into very complex stuff but i'm gonna try to keep it very illustrated and that's the reason why i'm asking you to subscribe and i'm asking you to comment if there is anything i'm perfectly ready to redo the, the entire video maybe i might chop it up add some more and stuff correct everything that need to be correct it's actually the first time i'm posting videos on youtube my first experience so if you have any comments i'm totally open to that remember to subscribe share and like yeah as the first time i'm asking people to like so like the videos if ever they were useful and take care of yourself bye